This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. This season marks a new beginning. Witness the raw power, iconic sound, and pure speed from the historic Lotus 79. Experience the competition and glory days of early 80s open wheel action. Watch as drivers wrestle these ground effects cars into submission. Drivers will face off wheel to wheel. For some, it's a chance at redemption. For others, an opportunity to make a statement. All sharing the same goal, to be crowned champion. Who will be victorious tonight? The Lionheart Retro Series presented by Butt Kicker starts now. Well, there are a few places on earth quite as beautiful as the California coast. And few tracks in the world provide the backdrop of one of America's great sporting venues. This is WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. It's Thursday night, and that means we're live on the iRacing Esports Network for round 16 of the Lionheart Retro Series presented by Butt Kicker. This is the Graphics Grand Prix of Laguna Seca. Good evening, I'm Jason Galvin alongside the banker, Brian Yazik. I'm Jed Yam is calling the shots tonight. Cameras provided by Dougie Beard, and this is the Sim Experience Countdown to the Green for the Lionheart Retro Series. As they get ready to go at Laguna Seca, let's take you around the track. Welcome to Laguna Seca. Located just east of Monterey, California, it's hard to deny that this is one of the more scenic American road courses. It travels up and down a hillside which not only offers spectacular views, but one of racing's most iconic corners. Clocking in at two and a quarter miles in length, 11 turns split up the current configuration. I say current because up until 1988, the track's layout was shockingly simple with a mere nine dangerously fast corners. But despite becoming a much more technical track, this difficult nature was retained in its modern form. Turn 6 in particular places an emphasis on precision and daring with its tricky dip at the apex and narrow racing line. But the most well-known spot on the track is of course the corkscrew. Blind and kinked on entry, it then whips the driver through a chicane which drops you nearly 60 feet. It's earned a reputation worldwide for forcing even the most daring competitors to second-guess themselves. But there's honestly a refreshingly wide variety in types of corners, making it a perfect track for driver coaching and training. Elevation changes, differing cambers, and every sort of apex imaginable leaves seasoned veterans and newcomers alike spending hours trying to perfect a lap. With the track becoming popular for hosting IMSA, IndyCar, and MotoGP in its recent history, it also brings out lots of vintage racers due to the Monterey historics each year. Likely to remain a fixture on the American racing scene, this legendary circuit is almost always high on drivers' best of lists. Its history and its uniqueness are sure to delight all for years to come. Well, that's WeatherTech Raceway at Laguna Seca, and Brian, a track that is, I know, a favorite of everybody in the open wheel racing community. Heck, the racing community in general uh, loves this facility. It's put on great events over the years for sports cars and uh, 
open wheel cars, does some great historic races now in uh, in real life. It, it's a shame that we've never gotten the stock car boys to uh, to show up there for a, a real serious race. I feel like it'd be a lot of fun here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. But tonight, a uh, different challenge for these retro cars, these Lotus L79s. And for as much fun as this track is and as well known as it is, uh, it's still a pretty difficult track to get around. Hi, you're absolutely right, Jason. Hello, welcome everybody to another, another Global Sim Racing Channel broadcast on the iRacing Esports Network. There you see on the track, Laguna Seca, 11 corners. Technically, you can make the corkscrew into two corners, but they decided to call it eight and then eight A. So you see, and you're watching Saunders in the background, providing a beautiful backdrop to just kind of the flow of the track. Laguna Seca is a very flowy track, I guess if that makes sense. If you've put a lot of laps here, you'd probably kind of understand where I'm going with that. It, it, it's very, very rhythm-based. So you can find yourself running way wide in uh, down into to kind of the uh, Andretti hairpin down there because it's just so easy to overshoot that corner because the, the double lefts there just kind of sneak up on you. So you're watching Dustin Wardlow just exiting the corkscrew, I believe. And working his way through there. And you kind of see just how it all flows around here at Laguna Seca. I mean, Jason, we got to come here next week for the, or not next week, but the week after uh, for the IndyCar race. I mean, the, what do you think about this little joint? Yeah, I mean, you know, this is a track that I feel like uh, all racers have kind of a love-hate relationship with because it's such a fun facility to get around, Yaz. But, uh, you know, we talked about the corkscrew. And the corkscrew is the like never ending pit of death, it feels like, <laughs> lap by lap. Like every, I feel like at least for me, and uh, I've had pretty fortunate success around this track, but every time you get through the corkscrew, it's like, oh, okay, deep breath. <laughs> like, we made it. <laughs> we'll see you again in about a minute and 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, yeah, you, uh, it, that's the other thing too about Laguna Seca or Mazda, rather weather tech. It's it's gone over over a couple uh, name changes uh, throughout the last several years. Right now, landing at Weather Tech Raceway at Laguna Seca. Um, but yeah, I mean, quick lap times here. I mean, we're watching uh, on screen. Is that Saunders? I believe uh, right now Saunders on pole provisionally with a one fourteen flat. I mean. For these Lotus 79s that make a little bit less horsepower and get around the track a little bit quick or a little bit less uh, quick than maybe the Indy cars or some of the other ve or vehicles that race around here, I mean, it's real easy to see, you know, just from the viewer at home, you can watch these sweeping corners and it's so easy on corner exit to place a tire wrong. It is very easy to place a tire wrong here. And uh, this track uh, is a, a lot of fun. And uh, so are our sponsors here in the Lionheart Retro Series, and that includes our friends at Sim Experience. The Countdown to Green brought to you by Sim Experience. It's the team behind the AccuForce Pro V2 direct drive steering system, provides unparalleled realism and the most advanced tuning features on the market. The AccuForce provides a significant advantage to any sim racer, can also make for effective training tools for real-world drivers. For more information on the entire Sim Experience ecosystem, including the GS5 seat, Stage Series motion systems, and the Sim Vibe software, visit simexperience.com. Promo code uh, for five percent off of Sim Vibe software is SimX Lion. And uh, of course, I've already seen them advertise some great Black Friday deals coming up as well next week for our friends over there at Sim Experience. Let's take a look at the points as they stand here in the Lionheart Retro Series presented by Butt Kicker with just three events left. And uh, these point standings, I believe now, are factoring in drops. Yes, they are indeed. So this is with drop weeks factored in and you get two drops in the Lionheart Retro Series. And frankly, this championship is Ryan Otis's to lose in the most catastrophic of ways. Uh, if Ryan Otis found a way to lose the title at this point, it would be uh, beyond a stunning turn of events. Mine is him just flat out missing the last two races of the season. 721 points for Otis gives him a 150 point, 100, 155 point advantage over David Clymer, pardon me. And this is a tall task for Dustin Wardlow if he wants to catch David Clymer as well. Wardlow sits 41 points back of second, but there's a great battle shaping up for the third and final podium spot. Paul Jenkins, Chris Lanini, Mark Cohn, Dean Maul, even Sage Karam, all right there in the ballpark 
uh, for uh, striking distance to Dustin Wardlow, depending on how things go. Let's take a look now at the uh, team standings here in the Lionheart Retro Series, presented by PlasmaTracks.com, Plasma-Tracks.com. Don't forget the dash. Again, holidays are coming up. Plasma-Tracks.com. If you want the cool present for the cool racing fan in your family. Uh, team standings. I'm going to go ahead and call this one, Yaz. How you feel I, about I that? I call that. I, yeah, I, this is I don't safe. Know okay. too much more, yeah. All right, yeah. I haven't really fully studied how the team points uh, system works, um, but yes, I'm I'm calling this one in the third quarter. It's over. Raven Motorsports Black. Uh, Raven Motorsports, of course, is our team champion one year ago here in the Retro Series. Uh, NLR Sim Racing, though, has jumped up into the number two spot, making kind of a late season charge there with Mark Cohn and Finney and, and Joe Hassert as well. Let's take a look at the rookie standings, rookie of the year, presented by our friends at Butt Kicker. And no surprise here, we've got a lot of rookies in the class. Uh, David Clymer is leading the rookie of the year points. That'll happen when you're second in the championship standings as well in your rookie year. So Clymer with a firm grasp on rookie of the year. Paul Jenkins, Chad Dalton, Marty Gramall, and Sage Karam also right there in the top five for our Rookie of the Year, presented by Butt Kicker. Rolling through qualifying right now, still have three minutes left. It is Sage Karam by uh, over a tenth of a second on Alex Saunders. Saunders 1,000th better than George Sandman, and Ryan Otis just another tenth back of them. So uh, right now we got four cars up front. He has four cars within three tenths of a second, and that's, uh, that's going to make for an interesting first couple of laps here around Laguna Seca and I'm very interested here with the retro car he has and I don't recall that we ran this car uh, here in a race that I ran or maybe I missed it but I'm trying to think this back is, this is the inaugural the inaugural, event. right yes yeah. so uh, th this car the way that it drafts you know and uh, Laguna Seca not a track you would normally think of where a draft or a tow would come into play but here the first couple laps coming down the front straight away up and over the hill I think there's going to be some interesting moments with those first four. You can definitely set it up as you go down there towards uh, kind of the end of the front stretch. You know, get that big punch up the, you know, or that big pull up the uh, up the straight, really trying to get sucked in there. I mean, it could really make for some uh, kind of right. Send it out into that corner, the Andretti hairpin, as it's uh, kind of affectionately known, at, uh, known as around here. Could really lend for some kind of overdrive or maybe some uh, brave moments uh, maybe someone trying to er, uh, replicate their inner daniel ricardo in their breaking <laughs> technique but uh, potentially ending up like kafiat so that's probably not the exact way that they want to be but then also look uh, i think it's up the uh, it's called the ray hall straight uh, that kind of leads up to the corkscrew. That's another kind of spot that these lotus cars might pull a little bit of suck uh, heading up into the corkscrew and for as tight as the top four are, look at fifth through eighth right now are separated by four hundredths of a second, 0.04. You know, I'm, I'm just coming off of the season finale for uh, the NHRA at Pomona, and uh, 0.04 is a number that we've probably talked about quite a bit at the drag races. Usually not something you talk about when you're talking about four or five cars on a road course here with a Formula One style car like the L79. So it's going to make for... Uh, quite an interesting uh, start of this race here. Let's take a look here if we can real quick at the series details presented by our friends at minus 273. This is the Lotus L79 as we mentioned here. Uh, it is a five-speed manual clutch car which for those drivers who run with the H pattern and the clutch makes it a fun car to drive. It is busy let me tell you that so this is round 16 of 18 as we mentioned two drops are factored in these are adjusted fixed setups it means that there is a, a great team led by andrew kinsella who works on these setups week in and week out to tweak them for each race over seventy six hundred dollars in cash and prizes on the line this season yes what are you watching in this one I mean, you kind of be all over the place. Uh, you know, you can look at Otis and and kind of see how hard does he really push uh, that 95 machine. I mean, he's in a very comfortable place. He's probably already down the road thinking, you know, what do I have to do to, to potentially clinch at our next event at uh, Mosport up there across the border? 
Um, so, I mean, you could see that. I mean, you're obviously looking at Sage Karam, Alex Saunders. Those two drivers put on a phenomenal show at Road America. So, I mean, you could see kind of that battle rekindle as well. Sandman, not anyone to sleep on as well. And, uh, you know, in F1, they kind of call it the best of the rest. And you look outside of that top four, I mean, there could be a lot of interesting battles uh, that uh, can shape up over the course of this uh, 56 laps. And then sprinkle a little bit of fuel mileage uh, concerns on it as well. Let's take a look at the grid and the starting lineup for tonight's Graphics Grand Prix of Laguna Seca. We are going 56 laps, 125 miles. Big thanks to Tyler Graff for his sponsorship of this event. Facebook.com slash Motorsport Graphic Design. If you want to check out the great work that Graphics does, the official uh, livery provider, graphics designer of the Lionheart Racing Series. Starting grid brought to you by Butt Kicker, and it is Sage Karam on the pole. 1 minute 13.580. The pole speed for this race. Alex Saunders edges out George Sandman officially by 1 thousandth of a second. It did round up there on our standings. Ryan Otis will start fourth. Row three is Dustin Wardlow, the Candyman, and Mark Cohn, the Watchman. Get a couple of pretty neat nicknames in row three. Little Train, Lionel Callisto and Scott Holmes. Row number four, Ryan Corns and J.P. Winshittle round out the top ten. Uh, row six is headlined by Travis Yeager, Liner, and Aaron Morgan. James Paulson, 13th. Chad Dalton, 14th. Dean Marty Grumel in the 15th spot with David Clymer to his outside. 17th, Frank Beezer, Richie Hearn not taking a time as well as Paul Jenkins, Cody Eldred in the uh, 10th row back there. And a couple others just to clean up there. Yeah, uh, Finian. Oh, no, not Finian. Tyson Landis and Chris Reagan also rounding out the field back there. 20, not quite 23 machines I see rolling. It's always hard to tell initially because there's some, you know, some cars that are rolling, some cars are not here. Maybe it looks like Richie isn't here. Everybody else is connected in, in the session, so we'll call that 22 cars. Maybe he's maybe he's going to start from the pits, or start from the garage. Apparently, that that's I mean that's a new trick. So we'll have to, we'll have to see. <laughs> is is that is, is that is that a new trick? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that uh, that that uh, that video where you kind of surprised your your dog by you know disappearing behind the sheet. I, mean, I think he's going to try that. I, there's someone I saw on the front stretch with a sheet, but I don't think it's going to quite work. Let's go take a look at some onboard cameras here uh, that we have at uh, Laguna Seca. Dustin Morlow in our graphics camera on board right up above the driver's head. See that Raven Motorsports machine working its way up this Ray Hall straightaway up to the corkscrew. From there, we're going to move back to a Travis Yeager liner in the Plasma Dash tracks dot com on board looking over the left side of the helmet and then we're going to go up to championship leader potentially almost clincher ryan otis in that number 95 machine uh that paint scheme very very familiar to uh, fans of this facility should bring back some memories there in that butt kicker on board jason let's light this fuse off baby bring in the cars down the hill here at Laguna Seca and the pace car will peel off ready to go for 56 laps the Lionheart Retro Series and the green flag is in the air this is the Graphics Grand Prix at WeatherTech Laguna Seca and Sage Karam shot out of a cannon down into turn one will clear for the lead. The battle for second, it's Alex Saunders on the outside of George Sandman. Saunders goes wide into the dirt. Don't see him make that mistake much. Creates an opening for Ryan Otis. Otis around the outside of three, and Saunders able to stick with it. Should have the advantage through four in one of the faster parts at the bottom section of this racetrack. Can Otis keep his nose in there is the question and the answer is no alex saunders gets clear and look at the gap that sage Karam and george sandman have already opened in the top two back to saunders and otis and dustin wardlow your top five as they run up 
the Ray Hall straight towards the Corks group for the first time in this one. Uh, many people remember the pass in the Champ Car Series from Alex Zanardi here. It's uh, the, probably the most famous uh, clip of racing, I feel, around this facility. Probably what got his name out there in the lures of in the lores of uh, open wheel racing in the United States of America. And you see for a road course, we're already back around to the start finish straight. So you see just how quick everything comes around. We got someone stopped on the front stretch. Was it it's Scott Holmes. Gonna take another uh -huh. look at it here. A little looper out of 11 it looked like to me. over that one. Yeah, that's gonna end Scott Holmes' race. Boy, Scott Holmes spun around and he, he just kind of nosed it in. Oh, no, he caught it pretty good. That car stuck. And then insult to injury, he, like, drove it into the wall again. I'm guessing the steering was not straight. So Scott Holmes, so a tough night. Oh, goodness gracious. James Paulson having a moment uh, uh, kind of at the turn three, turn four section of the facility. Got off into the, into the dirt, almost had it wrecked, but saved it, brought it back, and uh, now under attack from Paul Jenkins there in that other black and gold machine for Skid Park Motorsport. That is the easiest spot, I think, to go off the track as Paulson works around Frank Beeser into the corkscrew. That's brave. That was, that was one way nice that move. James Paulson shows you can make things work. Meanwhile, Sage Karam's already up the hill and across the stripe to lead lap number two. We will be keeping an eye on fuel here throughout this race because we've heard varying fuel numbers. Uh, anything as low as 15 up to 19 for laps that can be run. Uh, if you do the math, the problem with that is it's a 56 lap race. So uh, that could be the difference between two and three stopping it, depending on how your fuel mileage works out. It just adds another ripple, kind of like at the end of Road America, I feel, where everybody's be looking at the leaders and just kind of seeing where they're at. Could just, you know, could explain some early pacing uh, that we're seeing. Maybe Sage has decided to go with a non-fuel saving strategy, which I don't really think he's really done. Dustin Wardlow with some issues. Oh, he's sitting backwards. Oh, that's front wing damage on that number nine machine. But Dustin Wardlow, he missed last night's IndyCar Series race, and I know that he's been busy with some work stuff of late. I'm sure we'll be disappointed with that. That car just got off and got all the way into the tires, and that is a lot of front wing damage for mm -hmm. one of these retro cars here. Yeah, as we've seen, you can get away with bending the front wing, and it won't hurt it, you know, too bad. Um, that's that's not a bend. That yeah, is. It's, uh, when that front wing is uh, pretty much perpendicular to the racetrack, uh, that's not where you necessarily want to be. But Dustin, you know, it might be able to hang on to it. Yeah, he's a very skilled driver out there. Road course, you know, maybe take advantage of. Uh, of fact, he loves turning left and right in the Lionheart series. Maybe, you know, get some guys sleeping that maybe aren't so good on the roads and the left and the right. See, never know. You just keep plugging away at it. Got a good battle going on up here for fifth place, fifth, sixth, seventh. Uh, really, fifth on back. Boy, Mark Cohn, do yourself a favor and don't look in the mirror. <laughs> Behind them is Little Train and Morgan and JP and Ryan Corn's not too far back even from that. So they are, yeah, they're all starting to stack up behind Mark. And you have to, those are those moments where you look in the mirror and if you're holding up one guy, you're like, ah, all right, that's not bad. And then you see the relative that there's three more behind him real close. You go, oh, this could be fun. So Dustin Wardlow come on the mic there and he was, thought maybe he had another issue, but he's actually thanking the driver for letting him get around. Meanwhile, I'm taking a look up front, and on the last lap, maybe not as much, but the lap before, uh, Alex Saunders and Ryan Otis really started cutting in to George Sandman. And this last time around, Alex Saunders was able to cut in again. Pretty good lap times up there from the sharp end of the point uh, of the field. I mean, Sage Karam right now laying him down just as quick as he can. Uh, Sandman Saunders about three, four tenths off of that speed. But then you look at that last time by for, you know, Otis Saunders and Sandman and all of them within a tenth, uh, probably tenth and a half of each other. So it's kind of it, the, the, the dynamics of the race, right, I feel, are going to kind of go through a big shift as we work our way closer to the end of it. I have some updates 
Uh, Richie Hearn had some internet troubles, chose not to race. And uh, Finian Acuna decided to start from the pits in this one and has uh, thus far not really made much time. Uh, it could have been some uh, gremlin there because I noticed that Finian connected uh, pretty much right before the grid uh, began. So, could have just been a technical gremlin, got in a little late, decided to start from the pits, but hey, you know, he's already up a spot. And he's he's working over. He's, he's kind of caught that back, uh, some of the, 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 the back end of this field, and he's kind of working his way through here. So this could be a very interesting battle as well. Yeah, Finian's got Tyson Landis and Cody Eldred and the uh, battle Dustin Wardlow. Oh. We got Finn. Cody went around, and that didn't end well. Oh, it ended better than uh, it did for Holmes. That, that could have been catastrophic for Tyson Landis and Finian. Finian was the real benefactor there. He picked up two, two spots, and I think Tyson probably got an off track. Just that, uh, you know, it's the second time that we've seen that. I noticed it a little bit in practice, too. What makes that final corner uh, so, so tricky to try to lay that power down? It seems like it's a pretty... You know, carry some momentum in, kind of roll off, and, and call it good. Yeah, I, I wonder if this car, you know, this car struggles when you when you put too much wheel in it. And, and the one thing is it's a eight corner, right? And so the combination of the power and the wheel you know, could be the problem. A little bit Keep of an everything. Eye on that. Yeah, it is a little oh, bit yeah. of everything in this car. George Sandman uh, really starting to feel the heat now from Alex Saunders. Ryan Otis has not really been able to close in, but let me tell you, that second place battle is uh, going to be interesting here sooner than later. In fact, last lap, George Sandman 114.35. Alex Saunders 113.97. Fastest car on the track by a bunch is Alex Saunders. That purple machine. Flying through the, uh, flying through there. Saunders, obviously, no slouch. If you're, if you're a fan of the retro series uh, from last season, that purple machine, uh, black and purple machine, that should be very, very familiar to viewers. Uh, very strong on the roads. So it's not, uh, not super surprising that uh, you know he's riding up there. He's got some good pace, and that machine just looks stable. Go back to Frank Beeser in the 16th spot. Looks like had a little adventure there. Frank was getting ready to come up the oh. hill under the Mother's Bridge. And boy, they just Woo. way too much curb there. Is that what sort of looked like? Yeah, I, I, I mean, like, uh, you know, this facility really rewards getting the power down on exit. And it makes it so inviting to try overdriving. Oh, yeah. boy, that hurt the wing, too, big time. Yep. You can see it tweak there. That's So turn six is interesting. Turn five is uh, pretty wide left, and if you look at a track map, you'd think there's similar corners. Turn five, pretty wide and sweeping. Turn six has this huge dip in it, and you got to hit it almost perfect. You see Dustin Wardlow's in, maybe going to try to get that front wing uh, fixed up a little bit there. Uh, hopefully that car will still be able to continue. But turn six has this kind of uh, downhill dip, and a big, big, like, donut type of curb on the inside. And you've got to just split the difference there between hitting that curb and hitting the dip, and the car will settle nicely. But, boy, if you miss it, six can be catastrophic, and it can also ruin your entire run up the Ray Hall straight. should point in, by the way, I point out, I should say, rather, that we have an update on fuel numbers, and we understand that those were uh, maybe delivered to us uh, inaccurately, and that the fuel window is actually 26 to 27 laps, which, um, again, if you do the math, still makes it pretty interesting because we're going 56 yes. and a 25, 25, 50, 27, yep. 54. <laughs> uh, 27, 54, you're going to have to do a lot of saving. Well, it's kind of like the old... You know, back in math class, you know, if uh, nine, the, the nine plus race, ten equals the race, <laughs> if the race starts at 4:10 p.m. and the average speed is, you know, of of some, you know, you know the average speed is 116 miles an hour. Uh, what color shirt is the what color yeah, shirt is the track right. marshal and the corkscrew wearing? <laughs> uh, 
I love statistics class for that reason specifically, let me tell you. You know who I feel like would be really good at stats? Who's that? Alex Saunders. He, he put together some statistical stuff for the admin team over the last couple he's, years. He's kind of a number so, wizard, isn't he? he? He is a numbers wizard, yeah. Dustin Wardlow really good with numbers, too, by the way. That's... He's a he's a spreadsheety, Excel, e, numbersy guy. Something tells me Ryan Otis is probably also very good at that stuff. Spreadsheety. That's spreadsheety. Sounds like a bad spray cheese. Uh, <laughs> it's a new one. That's, we should get t-shirts made for the Lionheart meetup next year. So <laughs> There's some to add to the GSRC swag <laughs> shop. Right. Spreadsheety in quotations. Score Jason Galvin. Battle for fifth continues. That's Mark Cohn, the Watchman. Of course, has an affinity for collecting watches of all makes and models and types. And he's got a little train all over the back of him. In fact, Galisto going to make a move. And Mark Cohn gave him a boatload of room as they went into turn five. And now they'll hit turn six. And Lionel able to get clear. Mark Cohn will just chase him up the hill and try to defend now because here comes Aaron Morgan to the party as well. Fat Cohn really struggling right now, it looks like, because he went that through the corkscrew there. Yeah, that corkscrew was not his friend that lap. Uh, just, there was just no flow to it, you know. I was kind of talking about this earlier on in the event, Laguna Seca, kind of like a good rocking chair. You know, when you just kind of get into that nice rhythm and you're moving along. You know, Jason, maybe in your case, you're holding on to the little one and you just got that nice little rock. That's, you know, that's just kind of a nice way to, to explain a lap around here. And that just kind of messed that up. But here comes Morgan sending it down to the inside into the Andretti hairpin and taking over the spot. And now JP is right there as well. And if J.P. Winshittle can get through the next couple of corners, he could maybe set himself up for a similar run that Little Train had and get underneath Mark Cohn going into turn five. Let's see if he's got a big enough run here. He's trying to use some of that draft. He's not going to get there. And now he's going to have to maybe reset here, back up turn number six, and try to get that run off of six up the hill towards the corkscrew. I'm not sure he's got the run he needs. Um, J.P. also... Looks like it might be blinking in and out a little bit there. Yeah, a little bit of that back and forth. JP's kind of had an up and down season, so I know he'd like to get a good result. Uh, you know, trying to make kind of the best of it as you can. You know, people trying to set up their 2020 plans and, uh, you know, so it could, you know, just try to position, build up some momentum, uh, get ready for next season. Think back to the incredible battle that JP had at uh, Imola. That mm. was. Amazing, and is this Cody Eldred on yeah. pit road? Did he tow? Uh, the front of that car looks like it might might have had an excursion. Let's look. Well, I think we might not have it here. Well, he he pit it on his up. own. Yeah, maybe maybe Cody, uh, maybe the love-hate relationship has drifted to the hate side of things. Yeah. For, <laughs> One Cody Eldred here at WeatherTech Raceway, Laguna Seca. Justin Wardlow has disconnected as well. Unfortunate for fans of that man. But uh, the worst candy. <laughs> if if you're <laughs> looking for like, if you are looking for a just spectacular like stocking stuffer, go get a box of chews from the Wars. And if you've never had them, just go to Dewar's website and look them up and order and enjoy. And you can send Yaz and I a, a thank you card uh, for taking our advice and getting said shoes. DeWarsCandy.com. And that thank you is uh, you know getting me some Dewar's shoes. So if you just go in there and order two boxes and just send them my way, that'd be cool. Yeah, two to Yaz, one to yourself. So we call the three finger special. <laughs> this is Mark yeah. Cohn still trying to hang on. So we get back to the action here at WeatherTech Raceway with Laguna Seca. We're working lap 13, and Mark is uh, still got JP right behind him. He's actually done a good job of holding off JP, but let me tell you, he is holding up JP. And I think JP has just been unable to really get a run. 
Uh, Lionel and Aaron Morgan have checked out from mm -hmm. this group. In fact, Ryan Corns and Chad Dalton and Marty Gras and Travis Jagerlener and David Clymer and Lions and Tigers and Bears are all starting to catch up to these two as well. So, got to imagine at some point here, JP is going to try to push the issue a little bit and get around Mark and space himself out. Yeah, I'm, and uh, to the viewers at home, if this racing looks like something that you might want to be a part of uh, for 2020, you know, Lionheart Racing Series, always looking for new members, especially with that magical switchover of the calendars, switching those final two years that you write at the end of all of your checks. Uh, they are looking for interested drivers joining the Lionheart Racing Series. For all of the information about this series, times, sponsors, plugs, everything that we've got going on, uh, give them a visit lionheartracingseries.com and you can see all the spots uh, everything that you need if this looks like somewhere that you want to be for 2020 and JP Winshut have finally got around Mark Cohn and Mark Cohn did not like how it happened because I heard him immediately call for an admin it happened coming out of the Andretti hairpin and going into turn 3 and JP even kind of blinked out, and I wonder if maybe that's what Mark is going to complain about. Is I didn't see anything there, Yaz, necessarily that would have warranted uh, a complaint or an issue aside from the blinking. What did you think? Uh, pretty much the same that uh, I can kind of piece together. You know, because especially when you're holding on to that wheel and you, you, know, you see that guy dancing around up there or even behind you, it's very unnerving. It's not something that the real drivers have to, uh, have to face with. Well, and the other problem, you know, is is when you have a driver who's blinking and you're side by side, it'll wreak havoc on your spotter. You know, mm -hmm. right side, side clear, clear. Right, right side, side clear. clear, right, exactly. Yeah, we've we've all heard anybody who's driven an eye racing has experienced that at some point. And uh, when you're running on a road course like that, that's got to be difficult. Yeah, I mean, I you know, especially with the focus that it takes to get around these road courses successfully and fast. JP running a little wide there. Uh, but what it takes to get around these places, you know, having that extra little bit of a distraction is just not the uh, not the uh, not the way to be. And you're looking over the helmet of Travis Jaegerland sweeping through that corner. Kind of like what Jason was talking about earlier up the Ray Hall straight. Just a whole lot of elevation change at Laguna Seca, this being the biggest part of it. You take that left hand, you and then you float down there. I think it's three-story, or was it a three-story drop? How big is that? Six-story drop. Six. Yeah. Got to wear a parachute on the way down. Uh, pretty much. Good babble for seventh, though. <laughs> This is just one big old parade running around Laguna Seca. JP doing his best to try to get the heck away from it. Mark Cohn trying to chase him and not be the one that is holding up the train. But, uh, you know, you can look back at Corns there in the ninth spot. It seems like that's they are closer to him queuing up. I was going to say, Mark was, you know, just being frank, Mark was the one holding the group up here, and the last time around, now it's JP. You know, JP went a 116.1. Alex Saunders with problems. He's oh, the lost the screw spot. bites. And it's oh, I just got floaty on him. Too soon to the throttle, maybe. Just trying to chase down George Sandman. There it went. Didn't hit anything, though. Does lose a spot to Ryan Otis. Those four had checked out so far that he was, Alex was literally never in danger of losing more than one spot. To tell you how far out in front all those cars are. In fact, <laughs> Alex now, you talk about in no man's land for Alex Saunders. He is six seconds behind Ryan Otis and 13 seconds ahead of Lionel. 13 seconds Oof. after a spin. Back to fifth place for Alex. That's, uh, that's putting him down and uh, also we were mentioning uh, the connection for the driver of the 56 machine. Race control coming across the screen, giving him a nice little verbal warning that they noticed the problem 
and uh, if it does not correct itself, uh, I feel like it could be uh, a very fast undoing for JP there. Mark Cohn with problems. Oh, yeah, he got through that corner wrong, and now he's back in the Hornets. That's having to slam the door going into that corner, and now he's still under attack. He's got Chad Dalton looking up the inside, maybe trying to take the long way around the corkscrew. Oh, and Cone driving oh. it in. That caused the stack up. There's Mardi Gras on top of that. And you know what? Throw Travis Jagerliner in there as a curious bystander. Boy, oh, JP, meanwhile, has uh, kind of checked out because of this. He saw that and said, all right, bye, guys. Bye. I'm gone. <laughs> J.P. Winchito got warned, and he was like, well, I know how to solve this. I'm going to get <laughs> checked out. <laughs> Ryan Corns, Mark Cohn, Chad Dalton, Mardi Gras, Travis Hagelander, David Clymer, James Paulson. Did, did I miss anybody? I feel like I just I'm, named everybody in the race. I'm pretty much. That's the, that's the line. That's the battle through there. Missing nothing out front. Uh, Sage Karam with a six plus second, five second advantage over George Sanders. James Paulson's around. Oh, James no. Paulson was on the back end of that group and he spun coming out of turn four. Remember, we saw him go off there earlier. Turn four strikes again for Paulson, and this time he caught too much of the inside. So last time he spun in four, well, he didn't really spin. He kind of drifted off the track because he got too wide. This time, he runs right over. Paulson's okay, but he lost another spot to Jenkins there. Boy, Ryan Corns has started to pull away now from Marcone as well. Yeah, that's just getting out and getting gone. That's the best way to be, you know. Try and get away from that pack. Run your line, run your race, just make everything okay. But he, he's gapping it just a hair. Mark did take two tenths out of him that last lap by, though. So that might be uh, you know, a little bit of a red mist carrying over for that driver, that 39 machine. J.P. Winchell, meanwhile, after that warning, has uh, really gapped his way uh, out in front of Ryan Corns. He's now got three and a half second advantage back to eighth place in Corns. And the last time around was one of the quicker race cars on the track. So connection issues or not, JP Winchell has managed to find some speed here as we work lap number 20 now for your leader. And that is Sage Karam in the three car. Sage is already headed back up the hill. That's how far yeah. ahead of the, that battle we've been watching for the last seven or eight laps Sage Karam yeah. is. This is turn six and now makes the run through the Ray Hall straight up towards the corkscrew. More issues for Paulson, I'm told. Oh! Uh, yeah, he's not going to make it from that one. <laughs> now limping away from that one, no. And one, two, Let's three strikes, it. you're out for James Paulson. Get this time, he... Oh. Yeah, he got through there fine. Oh, was it these guys? He caught, he caught the rumble. Yeah. And then, poof. Yeah, it did, he did the dirty dancing. Somebody put Paulson in a corner. Nobody puts Paulson in a corner. And a turn, turn nine put Paulson in a corner. It, it, yeah, that that won that battle. <laughs> that was that was the uh, the the B roll footage. <laughs> didn't make that one. That one didn't make the movie. The rainy the rainy curve claims its first victim. <laughs> Here in the graphics Grand Prix of Laguna Seca. Again, Tyler Graf graphics. G R double A. Paints a lot of the cars you see in this race, the Lionheart Indy Car Series as well. Check them out on Facebook. If you are interested in having your race car painted, Tyler's uh, not just an uh, open wheel specialist, by the way. I know he's uh, painted up some late models and super late models that I've run in big races in the past. All American 400. I won that event in a car that was painted up by Tyler a couple years ago. So if 
uh, you've got a car and you have an idea, Tyler can put pen to paper, so to speak. Yeah. Mouse, <laughs> mouse, to, mouse to monitor and make it happen for you. Nothing happening with the first couple cars, and that's why we're focused mid-pack so much. Lap 22. Sage Karam, George Sandman, Ryan Otis. They're all kind of out in their own world. Alex Saunders is uh, really on vacation now. <laughs> Even Lionel is checked out from Aaron Morgan. And then back to J.P. Winchettle, who just got warned again for connection. And if you're wondering why, well, it's because J.P.'s got company. Ryan Corns is right there. And uh, I know that the admin team, the admin team pretty fair when it comes to connections. Mark Cohn? Cohn had a big issue trying to lay down the power out of turn 11, and now he is going to find himself in a hornet's nest. He's got Dalton. He's got Mardi Gras going into turn. I think that's technically two down there. Oh, get through there, boys. Don't hit each other. Everybody's going to get through that side fine, but... And that was, shaping, one there. that was shaping up to get real exciting down into that corner. Wait, J.P. Winchettle is now under attack from Ryan Corns for seventh. And the blinking continues, and J.P. is just going to let Corns go. And I wonder, I was just getting ready to say, race control has been pretty fair all year about connection problems. You can have a bad connection as long as you're not racing somebody. You want to ride around at the back, you want to be out of the way, that's totally fine. The second that you are blinking like crazy and start racing people, they will park you. And they've been consistent about it all year. And I'm curious if uh, David Cordy, and I'd like to see who else is up in race control tonight, if Pierre is here as well. But I'm curious, as JP's coming to pit road, if he was maybe warned like, hey, you're going to have to let these guys go and either deal with running around in 13th or be parked and finish in, you know, 17th, 18th. So but we'll see. Be, you know, we're talking about fuel, you know, maybe he decides, you know, get out of that, run by himself a little bit. Right. Yeah. yeah. If he thinks that he's in the window of where he's going to hit, go run some single laps. He's out of the car. See if you can't separate yourself. Is he out? He's out of the car. Car is down for service. Don't see the driver returning to that vehicle just yet. We're trying to do a quick fix on the connection. We'll keep you updated as we continue to watch Chad Dalton and Mark Cohn and Dean Mall and JP Winchettle. Cars blinking on pit road now as well. I think JP's race might have just come to an end. And that's and unfortunate. Very uh, unfortunate. Good run so far uh, from that driver. Just trying to build something positive. Is this, hey, I feel like every time we've just had a hard luck uh, moment, I feel like the, the uh, 56 machine is a part of it. The stack up here now is for Athon back as Ryan Corns inherited seventh when JP came to pit road. Chad Dalton is eighth, then Mark Cohn, Dean Mall, David Clymer, and Travis Yeagerlin are is just kind of hanging on to the back of that pack right now. Yeah, I mean, we keep focusing on it, but this is the best action that we're seeing uh, in That's this what race. I was just, I was just clicking through. <laughs> the, I mean, because Sage has man. lapped Finian in 15th. Uh, with JP, James Paulson, Tyson Landis, Cody Elder, Dustin Ward, and those Scott Holmes uh, all off the track. I got a note from uh, Chris Reagan, uh, who was scheduled to start back, had some connection issues slash computer issues that uh, prevented him from making the start. Boy, how bad was JP's uh, connection tonight, Yaz? He didn't even disconnect from the race. He received throughput <laughs> oh, no. on pit road after he had essentially retired and he has just reconnected and I saw him commenting in the uh, Lionheart Discord about his connection issues as well. Uh, certainly he's welcome to rejoin the field here and you know try to make up any spots if cars were to drop out but tough end to his night as uh, Chad Dalton and Mark Cohn boy! A little crossover down there in Andretti. 
Cone made a move. Dalton crossed him up. Cone's going to stay there and got chopped and almost got <laughs> run over by Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras all over the rear wing of Cone. David Clymer now is within striking distance of Dean Maul as well. Sage is in. All the leaders are in. Well, except for Alex Saunders. Fool me. Let's well, say Otis Sandman. Five. That's that's not making it. That's not making it. Alex Saunders is on 26, coming to 27. Yeah. If you factor in the pace lap, but wouldn't it be something if Alex Saunders stole this race on fuel mileage oh, after that spinning on his own? You know, who knows? Maybe that slowdown. I mean, I know he's just getting through the gears. It's not necessarily what you want. That's actually what happened to, uh, I think that was Sage at Road America. The, the, the fuel mileage was good, except it didn't account for him to get back up through the gears. Right. And that's why he ran out around 14 there. Taking a look here at Mark Cohn. Sweeping camera angles. But Mark Cohn went the wrong direction on that last lap. I'm, I'm oh. intently watching Alex Saunders here. Whoa, that's a nice save by Mark Cohn. It's a great save, and Alex Saunders is in. He's in and now. And Alex Saunders ran a, he ran a hard lap. Like, I yeah. was waiting for him to maybe be, you know, clutching it, coming down the hill, do something. He ran a hard lap and made it with a spin, by the way, and that spin's going to hurt you on fuel. Yes. Now, you're going to see, here comes Sage is blowing by him right now. Saunders will lead that lap. No, wait, maybe he won't. Oh, no. I think he didn't get there. Oh. Ouch. He did not get there. I mean, that's that's 30 laps to go. I mean, that's hoofing it. Yeah. It's one thing to make it 27 with a pace lap. I don't think he's making it 20. Well, it's about 29 now. On the back side. Talked about it before, I believe Aaron Morgan, the Carolina driver, he's, I believe he hasn't pitted. Aaron Morgan made two more laps than anybody else. I mean, there was another place that he was real sneaky at. I know there was Imola, where there was the, the fuel mileage kind of t right. jumbled up the running order there. And he's, he's in the window right now, by the way. Yep. Uh, uh, where he would win this race if he made it a one stopper. He's 14 seconds back of Sage. <laughs> I don't know. Pit Delta 30. <laughs> now the the problem is is that he's he's got to maintain the same pace, which means theoretically uh, he would probably get passed by Sage with about two laps to go. But that's yes. But I'm all for something to watch. Ooh. He passes by pit road entry once again. All right, now I'm confused. <laughs> you got that smoky unit gas line, I think. I'm just, uh, I'm just wondering now, because um, he's, he's made the number now. David Clymer just came to pit road, so some of these cars that have been back there running one fifteens yeah. instead of one thirteens, they got an extra lap out of it. And Aaron, Aaron Morgan, Morgan just announced that he's pitting this lap. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you, Captain Obvious. <laughs> <laughs> I. There was, look, if he made it another lap after this one, I was just going to go ahead and hand him the race. <laughs> David Clymer on pit road. Uh, there's another car on pit road there as well, and that is the 44 of Travis Yeager Leonard. 35 is in as well. I don't know if it's necessarily a winning spot, but does make it could be, you know, could be a very interesting position grab at the end of it. And Morgan could be in a spot. I mean, yeah, the Delta's there, but. But I say I, worst they, worst case, worst case he's he's battling Sandman and Otis for a podium. Yeah, and, and then his record. <laughs> yeah, well. How bad do you know. want it, Aaron? How bad do you want it? <laughs> hey, he's, he's rocking the Jimmy Johnson forty-eight the day after the uh, day after Seven Time announced that he was calling it quits after next year. So yeah, that's that's another sign that I'm getting older in life. Right. All yeah. the kids out there racing are younger than me, and all the guys yeah. I grew up with aren't around anymore. I got a one-year-old who's not going to see Jimmy Johnson drive an ass car and remember it, and I'm thinking to myself, wow, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> Is Mardi Gras in as well? Did Mardi Gras ran an extra lap as well? We missed it. He did. So, yeah, wow. looking at the, uh, the run count. 
What now? See, now the problem is Mardi Gras. Aaron Morgan is already down the hill towards oh, the hairpin. Oh. oh boy, Aaron Morgan. <laughs> what well, that's going to be do you? Boy, Aaron Morgan is taking a couple cones for a ride, and I wonder if that's going to get him penalized as well. I mean, that for hit all the great exit Aaron Morgan was doing. He might have just tossed it away right there. It's interesting on. If I'm seeing this right, on our GSRC broadcast, it's not showing the cones. Nope. Or nice. Uh, but in well, iRacing, he, he literally just lost them. Yeah. Huh. It's all clear on my screen from what I can see. Well, let's see. Hmm. I guess we're, we're going to find out real quick if he got a penalty or not. Yeah, I'm hearing nothing over... Any of the uh, any of the channels. I'm not, so. I'm not sure that would be a race control issued penalty. I think I racing would issue the penalty there. Oh, that's right for, for dropping a wheel. And at that point, race control wouldn't chime in. Let's see. They stayed out. Yeah, must have got that. Yeah, you know, just watch the, it one more time. He ha and he hasn't asked for admin for a clearance or anything. Yeah. So you no, I, I, if, wait, if he Jason, had a black flag, he's coming in. I got it, Jason. It was net code to the cones. Net coat to the cone. That's an interesting one. That's what. That's what I'm guessing. That's my. That's my guess right there. Yeah. Well, net code was uh was great last night. <laughs> <laughs> now you know why I bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> I, do. I do. Battle for second here. Sandman, Otis, and a lap car. Ryan Otis trying to work his way onto the podium. That's Finney, and they just put a lap down. It's not the, not the name of the new hit sitcom coming to GSRC this fall. What's that? Otis, Sandman, Sandman. and a lap car? Yeah. <laughs> Could be. Instead of a guy, a girl, and a pizza place or something. What was that show back in the... Uh, okay, anyways. Two, two and a half men. Yeah. Two, two and a half lead lap cars. Yeah. <laughs> That might be what's left at the end of this one with the, no, the pace that no, Sage no. has. Oh, well, yeah, Sage, is, uh, Sage has hit the turbocharger here. What it I, now, here, I almost wonder if Sage, Sage might be looking down at Aaron Morgan thinking to himself, I, I need to put some space on him, you know? Yeah. Like, I've yeah, opened up a big see. enough gap back to Sandman and Otis that I need to gap Aaron Morgan. And as it sits right now... Aaron Morgan is 45 seconds back yeah. to Sage. That's real close. It's it's not close enough is the problem. That's... But if you look that gap up the road, I mean, you know, Morgan could st he could be on pace for a podium potentially. Put him right there for maybe a podium. Definitely into the top five. He's sixth right now. In fact, he's almost into the top five. But... A lot of that has to do with the pit strategy so far. Working lap 32 here in this one. And while we have a second here now that pit stops have kind of calmed down and everybody's thinned out a little bit, want to thank our good friends at Butt Kicker for all they've done for us this year in the Lionheart Retro Series. Butt Kicker products at instant immersion to any game, unlike a subwoofer that moves air and loses accuracy and force, Butt Kicker provides uh, products actually move mass, produces a haptic immersion. It is powerful. It is accurate. Butt Kicker products add the missing driver to car connection, bring more realism and immersion to your sim racing sessions. You can see the whole family of products at thebuttkicker.com. Use the promo code LION25 and you'll get 25% off of your order on board with the butt kicker cam on Ryan Otis's car. So many great sponsors here in the Lionheart series this year. The last couple years really it's uh, it's it's blown up I think to bigger than anything that most of us here at the Lionheart Racing Series could have ever hoped for. You know from my time in the past on the admin team. See how hard George and Zaldo and his team of admins work. Uh, continue to work to make this league what it is and it's the premier private league on iRacing I think there's no question about that especially when it comes to open wheel racing the IndyCar retro series and they got some things in the works next year that could be fun as well and between the broadcast here on the iRacing Esports Network and partnership over the years with Global Sim Racing Channel and GSRC and 
several sponsors, and we're 10 plus sponsors deep every year of companies that care. And uh, conversely, the members and you, the fans who tune into these races, uh, seem to reciprocate and send your money with those sponsors. And that certainly is appreciated as well. On board here with Chad Dalton. Chad running around in the eighth spot. Oh, pardon me, this is David Clymer on board with. He's chasing Chad Dalton. Climber in ninth, Dalton in eighth as they head down the hill. Also, another thing, too, Butt Kicker does, uh, they're selling some Thrustmaster products out there. So check it out with their website with the uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday weekend looming. You never know what might pop up there. Yeah, I got to open another credit card. <laughs> this could be the year that we complete the rig, you know? Yeah. Sage Karam is about to lap Mark Cohn, who uh, the pit cycles were not favorable to Mark. He had that little slide, and then he had the pit stop, and Mark is back there in the 12th spot after running up as high as 6th or 7th at one point. Sage Karam now uh, will set his sights on Travis Yeager Leonard, and then there will only be 10 cars on the lead lap. And believe you me when I say Sage is going to get there, and he's going to get there sooner than later. Mm -hmm. Uh, he like, could very potentially lap up to Lionel, potentially. Yeah, the way things the way things are going, uh, you know that that pit stop, the pit strategy for Mardi Gras and Aaron Morgan, I'm gonna guess will save them. Would drop Lionel down to seventh. We might be in a spot where six cars finish on the lead lap. The pace Sage Karam continues to carry. Last time around, he ran a 114.48. His best lap of the race was a 113.501, which is unconscious around here. I mean, that's only six seconds off of the real-life track record, and that was Helio Castro Nevis in a modern-day indie car with computer systems and downforce. <laughs> Downforce, you know, that big one. Downforce is a crucial part, something that the L79 struggles with. Ground effects are there. Yeah. The uh, air effects are not. <laughs> the battle on screen shaping up between Sandman and Otis for the runner-up position. Right now, oh, Sandman Sage. has it. Boy, did he make contact? That was so close. Sage and Travis Jaeger-Lenner. Ugh. Coming down the hill out of the rainy curve, and man, close. There's, I'm noticing some wing damage uh, on the front of that three machine. He, I, that was there already. That was close. I don't think he got him. No, just you, this race ends. Uh, Sage gonna have to make a trip down to Smart and Final and check out the laundry detergent aisle. I think. That moment right there. <laughs> is smart and final a thing in the rest of the country? I guess no, I should have thought I about no that. No idea no. what you're talking about. No, no idea. I just figured that was some kind of California thing. It, well, it's a supermarket. I mean, it's my probably like, su why do supermarkets have to be different everywhere, you know? I don't know. That's what Walmart tried to do, and, and everybody got angry at them. Like, like a, we, got a, we got Vons in California, and you go, to, you go to Arizona where I went to college, and it's fries. It's the same store same logo they just instead of being bonds they're like let's call it fries and it's like it's, it, i've heard we all things bond. like like it's the the carl hardy's or carl jr versus hardy's like the logos yeah. are exactly the same but depending on where you're at wouldn't it be something if the person who founded carl's jr and hardy's was named carl hardy that be, would be kind of interesting yeah, yeah. sage Karam uh, putting another car lap down is that is that climber it is yes, so sir. sage is now lapped into the top 10 Dean Maul right in front of him, then Chad Dalton, then Ryan Corns. He's continuing to watch the battle for second. Otis Sandman. Otis just on the binders and breaking. It's really impressive to watch. George Sandman, you know, don't don't discount him when you look at the you look at the point standings and think to yourself. You know why? Why isn't why isn't he better than 19th? And it's well, it's frankly because he's 
Just missed too many races. Just missing three races plus the drops. But George Sandman started 10 races and has five top fives and a win this year. That pretty good a, stat line. It's a pretty good average from where I'm shaping up. Of course, it's not as good as Alex Saunders, who's got two wins and four top fives and seven starts. <laughs> well, you know, there's always that one kid in class that will show you up. Well, well, there's Sage, who has four wins and six <laughs> top fives. That's the kid that shows up and beats, beats you up for your lunch money. Yeah. 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 George Sandman is the kid who's like, I got into Cal. And Alex Saunders is the kid who's like, I'm going to MIT. And yeah. Sage Karam's the kid who's like, I didn't go to college. I'm just going to run NASA. Lead <laughs> <laughs> engineer somehow on the spaceship. I mean, you know, in terms of outer space, he is gone. That's a fact. Just lapped uh, Maul that last time. I'm going to be setting his sights on Dalton and Corns next. But Ryan Otis keeps getting real close to George Sandman down into Andretti, and then Sandman here as they go up the hill. It's almost like you could split this track in half. You go up the hill, and it's all Sandman. You come down the hill, it's all Otis. And they're it's closing in now to lap traffic here. Mark Cohn is right in front of both of them. I don't think Mark's going to be in the way of those drivers at all. Oh, I bet George would have appreciated if he moved there, though. <laughs> it's all over the back of Cone, and this is a dangerous spot to be lapping cars. Mark does the right thing. That's going to hurt Otis, though. Yeah, Mark that... did the right thing, but Otis just caught him at a bad spot. Yep. Just unfortunate through there, but uh, and it looks like Cone is bringing it to pit road behind that as well. So it does break up that battle a little bit. Give it to Sandman. Alex Saunders, meanwhile, quietly has uh, been chunking off time to both Sandman and Otis. That last time by, oh, wow. he was seven tenths quicker than Sandman. He was a second plus quicker than Otis, but Otis had that little holdup. In fact, uh, Alex Saunders, four tenths quicker than any car on the racetrack last time around, 114.0. Driving through the red mist perfectly, I believe, is the driver of that 13 machine right now. Self-inflicted red mist, unfortunately. You know, you, you never want to have an issue, but if you do, you never want it to be your own. <laughs> Very true. Looking around on the track map, uh, yeah, Corns has been lapped, so... Sage, uh, he's, I mean, he's at the line right now, and his next target being Aaron Morgan just went into turn four, I believe. A little bit of a gap there, just from point of reference. I don't, I don't think Sage is going to get to Morgan. The other thing is Morgan's going to one-stop it. Oh, I, that's right. That's going to mess that up. We can, uh, we can categorically, uh, I think, commit to the fact now that Aaron Morgan is not going to win this race on the pit strategy. Not not when he's about to be lapped. <laughs> yeah. It tends to not work. You don't, you don't lose that much time on pit road here. I know that. For eighth. This is now happening. A lap down. It's Dalton and Mardi Gras as they come up the hill. Ryan Corns just in front of both. Sage Karam working lap 40. Click oh, over to 41 there. as they come across the line here. And there will oh, be 16 Korns. laps left as Ryan Corns. Corns had a mistake. Uh, shot real wide going into turn 10. That's been real a, wide. Yeah. Well, he caught the there's, bump on the inside. Like there's Harry Gans, high, wide, and handsome. And then there was that. It's cost himself three spots in all of that. Ryan was just inspecting the tire barrier. He wanted to make sure that they were properly fastened. Ryan Corn needed a closer FIA look. Agent. Needed a closer look. Yeah. Sandman and Otis have negotiated their way around Jaegerlander, by the way, and now Corns is actually the next car that those two will get to. Ryan Otis has 
close the gap back up to Sandman. In fact, last time around, Ryan Otis, fastest car on the track at a 114.055. And Alex Saunders uh, creeped a little bit closer to Sandman. Although he's got to chunk off a bigger gap than a tenth of a second a lap, I'll tell you that. It does help a little bit. And again, you can totally visually see this. Up the hill, Sandman, down the hill, Otis. The gap is opened up, and then they come through here, and it's like, Otis, Otis to pit road. Ryan Otis wants to vary the pit strategy for their, here. Yeah, he's going to go for the the uh, undercut there. Instead of run in that wake of Sandman, get out, and hopefully, I mean, he should find himself in some very clean air right now. Uh, you got to think here with lap cars, that's a smart strategy because Sandman is right behind Corns, and then he's got Climber, and then right in front of them is... Dalton and Maul, and that's a potentially a battle to get into the top five, depending on how pit strategy works out. So, I, mean, uh, I love Otis this move by Ryan Otis. He might get caught behind these slower cars right here. I think that is Finian and Jenkins. The inside pit access here. He, I think he's, he's going to come be, out behind him, but he's going to be gapped enough to where he's not, not going to hit them in a corner here. No, but he's going to be so in the be same. I mean, he's pretty much the he's same gap to there so that he was to Sandman. The difference is, is that you know, Paul Jenkins' last lap was a 116.99. Otis should be able to get around both of them here fairly quickly. Let's see if we can, if Amjet, if we could stay with this here and see how long it takes Otis to get around these two. Because that will really determine how well this strategy pays off. Looks he's like... He's going to get one of them here as Finian yeah. moves over. Finian moves over. And now he's going to get into the corkscrew, and that's where the faster cars really seem to make up time. Is who who has the uh, the biggest the biggest set of uh, attachment trailer hitch covers? Yeah. <laughs> down into the final corner, Otis really closes the gap, and if he can get the power down here and get around Jenkins on the front straight, then I think this is going to work out. Should be able to get to where he needs to be right he's here. Got to run. He's going to get there. Jenkins just. Jenkins. Well, I hope he's going to let him go. Eh, uh, respectable. For a second. I'm yeah. not going to roll all the way over for you, but right. you, know, you got to earn a little bit. For sure. Ryan Otis gets clear. And see, now Otis is gap. The next car in front of Otis is Travis Jaeger-Lenner, and he's coming up the hill to the corkscrew already. So Otis with about 20 seconds of clear space in front of him. I think this was the gap that he was aiming for when he made his stop. Because there you see, you know, Sandman stuck behind Climber right now. Is Sandman going to make the dive to pit road? Or is he going to try and get out? And he's going to go around him. Now, the other thing to be watching here, let's let's pay attention to the lap times and see what that difference is from a split standpoint. Uh, you know, Saunders running around that lap car. Uh, uh, Sandman, sorry. Uh, that was a 115 flat, and I'll be curious to see what Otis uh, rips off here. You know that he's finally clear. Sandman went 115.0. Alex Saunders went 114.2. And Ryan Otis, Otis comes across. 114.69. So right nice. now, Ryan Otis in one lap managed to cut the deficit theoretically in half well i think that's the that's the gap right there he was four tenths or so behind sandman before that pit stop now he just ran four tenths faster so that you know if if we had the uh you know formula one style graphics and they'd show that you know uh, overtake probability i think right now we're probably at a solid 70 percent chance of an overtake because now here comes uh Sand, sandman again up behind Mardi, Mardi Gras Mall. Oh, that shouldn't affect this lap that bad. But I almost, I fear that the damage has been done. Because now that last time, Sandman, whoo! 1.13.9. That was a spicy jalapeno. Okay. So now we got to see how Otis responds. And maybe that, that gap is, is kind of opened itself back up. I mean, you and I both know. These Lotus 79s are absolute rocket ships on low fuel, uh, probably like Sandman is right now. Stage one of 113.8, Sandman of 113.9, Saunders of 114.3, and Ryan Otis clicks 14, it at a 114.1. So George Sandman makes up 
the time he had just lost on the previous lap. You now, wonder if, how much of that was he caught Dean Maul in a spot where the draft helped him, you know? It could have been, but, uh, you know, some of those guys up there running around at that speed. We are coming up towards the uh, the bottom end of this race. As you see on the screen, lap 45 of 56 complete, 11 to go this time by as Sage Karam goes ripping across the start-finish line. Up the hill comes Sandman again. This time he's got a little bit of a toe from Chad Dalton and George Sandman, 114.36. So he slows. Now let's see what his counterparts do. Alex Saunders, 114.34. Now let's look the at the same ballpark. A lot of time for Otis here still as he's just now coming through turn 11. Down the front straightaway in the pit curve. 14 flat. So Otis makes the time back up. It's like this give and take game that we keep watching between George Sandman and Ryan Otis. Sandman around Dean Mall and Chad Dalton now. Yeah, so now that should be the driver uh, of that 06 machine should finally be fully clear. Yeah, the next car on track is the leader, which is Sage Karam, and he just came onto the pit straight. So what you're saying is no pressure. No pressure at all. This is where, yeah, this, this is where you get around. The spotter goes, all right, clear by infinity. And now the difference is going to be Sandman has open track and light fuel, and Otis already pit. So Otis is going to be carrying a little extra fuel. But boy, did that lap hurt Sandman? One fourteen sixty nine for George Sandman. That is Not seven nice. tenths of a second slower than Sage. Alex Saunders, actually quickest car on the track so far. 113.85. And let's keep an eye on Otis now. Coming around turn 11 corner. up the front stretch. Ryan Otis trips the clock. Ooh, 114.68. Made a mistake somewhere. But still All by a little himself. bit faster. Still a little faster than Sam. Saunders. I feel Saunders is going to be the fly in the ointment of that battle between Sanders and Otis, or Sandman and Otis. Saunders is ripping off consistent fast lap times. Fastest car on track last time at a 13.85. So he's starting to bridge that gap just a little bit, and he could be up there racing for a podium as well. And Otis, I'm looking at his lap delta here, and, and again, it looks like Ryan Otis... He is uh, maybe having some struggles early on on this lap. Sandman wide in the final corner. Boy, the mistakes just keep clicking. Got I'll take this. you back. A battle for seven. seven. Behind them. George Sandman ran a 114.89 on that last lap with nobody around. As Dean Maul is trying to make a move on Chad Dalton, and this is just behind Sandman. There you see Sandman, the HPP car. Pulling away. And Alex Saunders went 113.62. His Woo! quickest lap of the race. The second quickest lap of the race. Ryan Otis goes 114.31 on heavier fuel. Chops a half second off a of Sandman. Alex Saunders picked up a second and two tenths. And all of a sudden, Alex Saunders is right behind that battle for seventh between Maul and Dalton. And now if you're Sandman, you start thinking to yourself, at one point does George Sandman hit pit road? I mean, trying to run that out probably as far as he can, try to shorten that stop as much as possible, fuel only. I mean, this lap. no, uh, Otis had a five second pit stop and I feel like probably about as fast as it's gonna be. Oh, Dean Maul got a run here on Dalton. Not and what this Saunders is right wanted in front to see. Of Saunders, right. Oh. Saunders clicks off a 114.4, stuck behind these two. Mardi Gras and Dalton. Mardi Gras is going to clear them, and Saunders poked his nose in there as well, and Chad Dalton didn't have much of a choice. So now the question is how quickly oh, can Alex Saunders. Mardi, Mardi Gras, oh, hang on to it. That Mardi Gras. Wowzers. It worked out nice for Saunders. Didn't work out so nice for Malls. Now he's going to be back under attack from Dalton. No 
no blinking from anybody out front. Everybody's pretty much sticking with their fuel strategy. Should be coming up on that window, though, here where uh, Sage Karam, Sandman are going to be right at the end of their row. I mean, 25 laps this time on a tank of fuel for our leaders. Karam stays out. In fact, Karam ran a 113.55. That is the second quickest lap of this entire race. He ran a 50 earlier. Sandman on pit road. George Sandman pits. And so now we wait and watch. Alex Saunders will cycle to second for now. And the question is, where is Ryan Otis? He's coming down the hill through Rainey into turn 10. To pit entry into 11 is Ryan Otis. You're on board with the graphics car. Sandman is not away from his stall yet. Rolling He's now. just rolled. And here comes Otis up the hill. This is going to be mighty close. Sandman, it's going to be all about how he gets out of pit exit here. Look at this battle. Into Andretti. They're side by side, but on the pit road. And Sandman's going to hang on. Can you believe it? Whoa. Just some good laps. Trying to get to the end of that one. Having a little, taking as little fuel as possible. But and now Sandman, he's going to be back under attack from Otis. Sandman was in his stall a second longer than Otis. Had a second longer on the Delta. And somewhere Ryan Otis couldn't make that up. But Otis now, as you mentioned, yes, yeah, with the momentum all over Sandman. Keep our eyes on this battle, which is eventually going to, potentially for the second spot. What I'm going to be curious of is the uh, the over the overcut uh, that you might see from Saunders. Saunders still on the track right now, currently P2, running very fast lap time. I mean, I, Alex Saunders to I the lead know. back. The Sage is on pit road. Sage is off pit road. So your leader has pit. Alex Saunders inherits the lead for the time being and did get credit, I believe, with leading that last lap. Nope. No, he did not. Never mind. <laughs> Sage, Sage's stall is just past the line, Perfect and everybody spot. else's is just before it. Yeah. And it, it hurt Saunders earlier. Sage Karam goes around Chad Dalton. Little train on pit road from fifth. Aaron Morgan will pass him. Remember Aaron Morgan on the one-stop strategy. And is still I could take a top five 40, 49 seconds behind Sage on a one-stop strategy. Saunders is going to finally lead a lap. Yes, he does. Will not be a clean sweep for Sage Karam. 1366. Wow. Goodness. And so now we really wonder, Otis and Sandman. And by the way, Sandman has opened up Ryan Otis this lap. As they come across. 114.43 for Sandman. Let's jump up. Sage Karam's off track. Oh, Sage no. Karam spun. Oh, boy. Here's another look at it. All by himself, and did he catch the tires? Same corner Dustin Warbo oh. spun in. Tried hanging on to it. Almost saved it. Didn't hit anything. Well, oh, boy, he came close just trying to loop it around. He almost hit the tires. He actually got closer on the loop around than he did spinning. Another look. This should be wild. Hang on, to it, hang on 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 to it, hang on. Stay Saunders also on the pit road in all of that commotion. He might. I, I think Saunders is going to play a role in this battle for uh, the podium. Second place. Saunders I mean, is out. He's out ahead of Otis and uh, Sandman. Yeah, by plenty. Alex Saunders jumps Ryan Otis and George Sandman. Well, and the other thing of note, that mistake from Sage pretty much erased his gap. 
We know Saunders just took enough fuel to get to the end of this thing, and that car is fast. He has been faster than Sage, probably the second part of the race. I mean, one more mistake from Sage. Yeah, it'll take one more still, no doubt on that. Battle for third. Otis got a run. And he's going to clear Sandman. Where did that come from? Ryan Otis into turn six. It's not Tank over yet. Over spot. Sandman trying to battle back. Just into taking the, the carousel. And taking the defensive line. Oh, and contact. And around they go. And he, that's not what he intended at all. And you see Sandman stop on track going, no, 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 no. That's yours. Man. Well, it was almost, I hate to say the words, it's almost net Cody. Let's <laughs> take another look. That's close. It is. I think they're both going to get away with that. Any chance of a second place is definitely gone, though. Boy, just when you thought this race was kind of decided. Nothing likes a little contact to jump, jumble that all up. I give prop, props to Sandman, because you're absolutely right, Yaz. He could have kept going and put away the podium, and he stopped on track and let Otis have the spot. I don't know if that's going to save him from an avoidable contact from the admins or not. Um, I, mean, I don't know if they're even going to call that an avoidable. Yeah. It, it there could have been a net code. Yep. But we'll see. I'm not, I'm not willing to make that call one way or the other. That's why... I, that's why I'm the one with the mic you can hear. <laughs> the ones who talk in the private channel, that's uh, that's a little more difficult. Two laps to go for Sage Karam. Aaron Morgan, if he can make it work, he is going to get a top five. Mardi Gras, by the way, is only a second back of Lionel right now. That's another car trying to make it on one stop. So we'll have that to keep an eye on once this race officially completes as well. And that uh, contact causing the, some damage, it looks like, on the front end of his handmaker. Now he cannot hang with Otis at all. It was pretty heavy contact for Sandman. Just the way these cars work. Sage Karam already coming down the hill towards 10. Into 11. White flag is out. 2.2 miles left for Sage Karam. Trying to lock up his fifth win of the season. Nobody else has more than two in the Lionheart Retro Series. And we'll keep you on board here. And watch Climber. the master go to work. Climber with a, a, a pit stop. Couldn't quite make that work. Second in points as well. David Clymer is going to fall all the way back. Mark Cohn just got around Travis Jaegerlander back into the top 10 as well. Through the corkscrew for the final time. Well, he certainly wasn't perfect, not by his standards, but he was plenty good enough. Sage Karam wins the Graphics Grand Prix of Laguna Seca. Win number five in the 2019 season for Karam. Alex Saunders comes across second, Ryan Otis up the hill, and will finish third. And with that podium, Ryan Otis can pretty much pop the champagne on a championship. 
Battle for 10. Battle for the final Cone spot. Cone and Jaegerliner. It's going to be a drag race. Jaegerliner sent it in from far back. He's got Finian trying to help. But give that one to Cone. Wow, I got exciting at the end of that one. Mark Cone sneaks the top 10. And here's Aaron Morgan coming across in fifth place. And he makes the one-stopper work. Aaron Morgan and Marty Gramal, the only two cars that are going to make this race on one stop. And Mardi Gras will be the last car to come across the line. And he's doing so right now. Yeah, that's the final car to, fat, to, to pass the line. Seven cars finish on the lead lap. And Sage Karam takes home the win. We'll take a break and come back and hear from our winner on our podium. You're watching the Lionheart Retro Series presented by Bud Kicker here on the iRacing Esports Network. SimPit is an entertainment channel dedicated to the world of simulated motorsports. The SimPit is a leader in providing the sim racing community with news, reviews, interviews, DIY pieces, and instructional videos to make sim racing a better experience for all. Check us out at thesimpit.com or go to YouTube and just search for The SimPit. Welcome back. The Graphics Grand Prix of Laguna Seca is in the books. It belongs to Sage Karam. You are watching the Plasma Tracks post race show. You're on the iRacing Esports Network, plasma tracks.com. Proud sponsor of the Victory Lane post race show. And don't forget, if you go to that website, use the promo code LRS2019 for 25% off of your order. Black Friday is coming up. If you're struggling to find something for the person who has everything, head to plasma-tracks.com for original racetrack wall art, motorsports trophies, home decor, motorsports fabrication, and much, much more. When you see these things in person, you'll understand, and you'll think to yourself, man, why in the world have I waited so long? Get me some plasma tracks. Let's take a look at the final finishing results of this one here. And a great race once again. The Sin Pit race results for Sage Karam, his fifth win of the season here. The Lionheart Retro Series presented by Butt Kicker. He wins it by six and a half seconds. 
over Alex Saunders. Of course, he was out much more than that for most of the race. Man, that late race spin. Ryan Otis hangs on to the final podium spot after that contact with George Sandman with a few laps to go. And Aaron Morgan one stops his way to a top five finish. Little train, Lano Callisto comes home six. Marty Grandmall also on the one stop strategy, the final car on the lead lap. Chad Dalton, David Clymer, and Mark Cohn on the last lap sneaks into the top 10. In the 11th spot, give that to Travis Yeager liner with Finian Ducana in the 12th spot, 13th to Ryan Cohns with Paul Jenkins and Frank Beeser in 14th and 15th, respectively. Unfortunate events for JP when Shittle had a solid qualifying effort, had some speed, had the connection to not match all of the above, having to park that car, finishing 16th with Paulson in 17th, Tyson Landis in 18th with Cody Eldred 19th, Dustin Wardlow unfortunately finishing in 20th, and then the back half of that 21st to Scott Holmes, 22nd to Richie Hearn, and 23rd to Chris Reagan. Uh, both of those drivers did not start the event, so it would explain them being at the backside of the uh, the standings there. Let's hear from our race winner. And what a race it was once again for Sage Karen. Fifth win of the season here, Sage. Uh, that one seemed like it was all cruise control until the last few laps, and then you had that little off-track excursion there. How worried were you when the Car started doing the tank slapper that that might end your night. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, this track's so tricky. Um, it's just one of those tracks where you just have to like really be in a in a rhythm. Um, and you know, any disruption of that rhythm can, it, this place can really bite you really quickly. Um, so that's why I kind of um didn't even try and save fuel for this one. I, I knew I could try and save fuel and maybe, um, you know, overall help my chances of winning this thing but I, I just decided to just go for it because i i knew once you start saving fuel you start you know breaking your current rhythms and and everything and um that's kind of what happened at the uh, at the end there i you know i was um just kind of in a good rhythm and then i was lapping cars and and then uh alex was in front of me and i was just pushing really really hard at that point trying to just catch him because i didn't know what kind of strategy he was running um but yeah between you know cars in front of me and and running you know qualifying laps to try and catch him um yeah i just had a little bit of understeer coming off dropped a wheel and hooked it so um it happens but you know i, I definitely was not a clean race on my end i just too many off tracks and that spin so you know i won you know i'm happy about that but uh you know i i want to i want to i want to do it cleaner next time <laughs> What's the secret around this place? Brian and I were talking about it, and uh, you know the, the corkscrew is obviously one spot where you can definitely tell the men and the boys are separated. But what's the key to being fast around WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca? Um, I think it's just getting away with um, all the track you can possibly use um, successfully, and um, you know this place it kind of rewards start turning in a little bit early. Um, and and getting up onto that curbing but um obviously you want to use all of that curb without touching the big red sausage curb on the inside um if you touch that usually you get chucked off into the into the dirt so um you know the very very fast guys around here will will basically put it within you know a millimeter of that red red curb and um yeah that's how you're going to be able to go fast and um i think probably you know, looking at the the um, relatives when I was looking at those guys behind me, um, you know, I, I seem to kind of be pretty even with everybody um, from start finish all the way up through the um, corkscrew, and then we go through the corkscrew, and then that next like downhill left hander and right hander. It seemed that that's where I kind of had like two tenths on everybody. So, um, you know, those are just those are just confidence turns and just getting it all the way down to the apex and you know trusting that the car is going to hold on on the exit as well and you know that's going to be a cool you know um kind of thing like at mossport you know that 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 place is all those types of corners as well so um you know that's probably my favorite track in the world so i can't wait to get there well i'm sure everybody's thrilled to hear that you've come off dominating the last two road courses and now we're going to your favorite track yeah i, <laughs> I um i've had some success in real life there i uh you know i i've won some formula races and and uh got my first imsa pole set the imsa track record there so it's definitely a cool one i, I can't wait well we look forward to seeing it got a couple of weeks uh congratulations another dominating performance tonight happy thanksgiving to uh, you and the family yeah you guys too thank you 
Sage Karam, winner tonight. He uh, he led what all but two laps, I believe, mm-hmm. in that one. Another spectacular performance. Speaking of spectacular, Brian, uh, this man had to do a lot of work tonight. Yeah, I mean, we're talking to the guy that led the other two laps, Alex Sonder, second step on the podium tonight for that number 13 Purple People Eater machine, Nighthawk Racing. I know, I just I can't, I just want to say Purple People Eater. Uh, you had the mistake early, and then it seemed like you really hunkered down and, and just were ripping off some extremely fast and extremely consistent lap times. I mean, uh, t- walk us through your night, Alex. Um, they were consistent, huh? They felt miserable, I got to tell you. <laughs> I uh I think I went off about seven times. I hit the red curbs about three times. I uh I I don't understand how I how I got second back because I was I was pretty far behind uh Ryan and George and even the, the pit stops. I didn't think I had a chance, so I was really just kinda I was driving angry. I was driving angry. Remember that whole consistency thing Brian just said? Yeah. 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 But yeah. believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I I guess it it worked out, but man, um, really really rough, really frustrating race. Um, you know, right right from the beginning, um, I hate I hate starting outside pole, and uh, you know, going going into the the Andretti hairpin here, I was I was trying to hang along the outside of George and and couldn't quite do it, and that just kind of kind of set the tone. There's red mist from lap one, so that was interesting. Yeah. Oh boy. I mean, I, I always tell the boys, uh, you know, I'm worth two tenths pissed off and, and you pray you apparently worth half a second. So that was, that was a pretty good drive in there. Um, I mean, the, the kind of, you did the overcut really, uh, on Otis and Sandman for second, uh, we were so focused on them and, and their fight. And all of a sudden we looked up and that's when you were ripping off those, uh, mid to high thirteens and, uh, really kind of eliminated the gap between you and, you know, Otis and, uh, and, 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 uh, Sandman there for that second step of the podium. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, it was, it was surprising. Um, cause last race out at Sonoma, I was in kind of the, kind of the same boat where I was behind them both. And I ended up doing the exact opposite thing. And I, I turned my, you know, the, the first stop, I only took enough fuel to cut the race in half and that worked and got me to second. And tonight I just took a full tank at the, the stop and, and just did a splash at the end of that work and got me to second. So I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, you know, unfortunately, Alex, I have some bad news for you. We go to uh, Mo Sport next, and we were just talking to Sage, and he said that's his favorite track. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's 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 fair. I mean, don't mean to uh, bring you down there, but he uh, he essentially beat us with with one arm tied behind his back tonight because of the uh, the the elbow stuff he's got going that's on. Right, I forgot so. we should even mention that to him. Yeah, so he's I forgot he'll, he'll, about that too. He'll, he'll be he'll be back at full strength. He'll have two working arms and a and a good track. You know, we'll we'll do what we can. I I love Mo Sport. Um, I don't know that I'm particularly good at it. Um, compared to some other places, but it is a really fun track. So, you know, I'm looking forward to it, and and we'll do what we can, and and try and try and put up a fight here. You know, there you go. Anybody you want to uh, to give a shout out to before we uh, send you on your way? Um, yeah, I'll give a shout out to, to Greg, my teammate showed up, uh, to, to spot me at the end while I was, while I was particularly pissed off. So he's, uh, he did, he did a great job putting up with me and he's waiting patiently for me to play rocket league to calm down. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's it. Good job. Right. Uh, good job. You guys. And you know, great, great race and everybody. So. Sounds good. Well, we'll catch you on down the road uh, up at Mo Sport there, uh, Alex, and uh, have yourself a happy Thanksgiving, bud. Sounds good. You too. Thanks, guys. All right. That's Alex Saunders. Now let's bring in Otis. Jason, you got him pulled up. I just love how Alex Saunders yes, was like, great job to you guys. He hasn't even had a chance to go back and watch this and be like, listen to these two hats. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I appreciate it though. Yeah, um, yeah, hey, boy, speaking of somebody, you thought Alex Saunders had red mist at the end of the race. Ryan Otis, um, that was a great race. It was really fun to watch. Yeah, I don't know how, and knowing you, you were probably pretty in tune with it, but how in tune you were with the different strategies that were playing out. Aaron Morgan one stopped it. You had Saunders trying to make up the difference. I know that you pit early to try to undercut Sandman there. And then after all of that stuff that we watched, what happened in the corkscrew? 
Uh, well, you know, he, he got a, I don't, I don't know what he did. Did he get in the dirt or got a little sideways turning up the hill? And so I ended up, uh, just getting past him in the kink, uh, approaching the corkscrew. And then he was, he was right there and my spotter said outside. And so I left a big, I left some room, uh, to my right when I went to turn down, but my, my angle was so acute, um, that I think my apex speed was just a lot lower than he thought. And he just, I think he just ran into the back of me when he turned in. Uh, but he was, he was a total gentleman. He, he just stopped and waited. Uh, so I gave him a thumbs up for that. Uh, you know, that happens. I've made that, you know, I've made that same mistake before, so I can't, I can't really fault the guy. And no harm, no foul in your case. You still come home in third. I think that's where you were going to end up anyways. Uh, somehow Alex Saunders, and he was just talking about it. He couldn't figure out how, uh, somehow he managed to just absolutely uh, demolish the gap to you and Sandman and then get around you guys there. So I think that third, it was going to be third and fourth for you two either way. And uh, an inch, really interesting race, I think, for, for Brian and I to call because uh, aside from Sage stinking the show up out front, which is starting to become kind of the usual for him when when he runs on road courses, but you and Saunders and Sandman were all on totally different kind of strategies, and they all m- converged at the end for the last five laps. How aware are you of what's going on with those other drivers that are around you when you're out there running laps? Uh, well... <laughs> You know, all I was really trying to do, um, I was really kind of focused on what Sandman's strategy was going to be, because all I really wanted to do was jump him in a pit stop, because uh, I knew in clean air uh, that was probably about two tenths faster than him, um, you know, on average. But, um, you know, once you get up behind somebody here, it's just it's just impossible to pass unless they make a mistake. Um, so I knew that was really going to be my only shot. And... Uh, you know, I was kind of parked behind him uh, in the middle of the race and I, you know, I'd make a little mistake here or there and then I'd catch right back up. And I thought, well, my only shot here is to try to undercut. So I, you know, I took the early stop the second time. And when I came, the the thing that killed me was that I kept making these small mistakes. Uh, I knew the lap times that I could run and almost every lap I'd, you know, dip a tire or I'd almost catch one of those curbs, which just kill you. Um, and uh, that's that's kind of what blew up my race. So I, I put in a good two or three seconds worth of mistakes uh, in that middle stint and uh, ended up just coming up short. It was still a lot of fun to watch. And I'm looking here to see if we got, did we get points updated yet? Because I think we're just about to the point here where we can call this official for you. And and if my math serves correct, Ryan, uh, it, as long as you show up to the final two races of the season, you will be in the Lionheart Retro Series presented by Butt Kicker Champion this year. So congratulations on that. Uh, it certainly has been a great consistent season for you. 13 top fives out of the 16 events so far this year that's pretty phenomenal oh yeah thank you thank you it's been uh you know it's been kind of a turnaround year for me because in the past i was pretty quick on the roads and really struggled in the ovals and it seems like my luck has really turned around on the ovals where i've been you know pretty consistently up there uh but i've just been getting beat on the roads so uh i gotta (laughs) I'm uh, looking forward to really next week. I think most port, I think it'll be fun. Uh, I know Sage is just going to be on fire. So, uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, a little bit of pressure lifted off. I don't feel like I need to be conservative. Um, you know, so we'll see, we'll see what I can do when, uh, when I'm willing to stuff the car into the fence. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you heard him or not, but, uh, he said that that is his favorite track. So. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was first thing he said. Yeah, it was a good night. I'm really looking forward to Mossport. It's my favorite track. And Brian and I went, oh. <laughs> oh man. All right. Hey, well, he's he's been flying. He's definitely earned every uh every one that he's gotten. And uh he keeps us on our toes. Uh that's for sure. So it's been uh it's been a pleasure, Race. Ryan, it's been a pleasure to watch you as well. Congratulations on the podium again here tonight and another great run for you in this one and uh, the championship 
all but a formality at this point. So uh, with that, we'll let you get going. Happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you two weeks down the road in Canada, eh? Oh, yeah. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Ryan Otis comes home third in that championship, like we said. Going back to Oregon, it seems like, in the Lionheart Retro Series this year. He has final thoughts on tonight's race. It was an interesting one. It was. There was a lot of things kind of going on, and um, just a lot of battles that kind of popped up on the track. We were kind of talking about it at the beginning of the show that we were going to have you know, up at the top end, you're going to have your battle there, but then the, kind of the best of the rest. And then that really provided some great action there between, uh, you know, some of the guys that we saw back there, Maul, Dalton, uh, Cone, Jaegerliner, uh, Aaron Morgan with his alternative strategy. So there was kind of a lot to pay attention to tonight, but it was uh, all in all, it was a good show. Certainly was. I want to thank everybody that makes uh, this race and this series possible for us. Graphics, the title sponsor of tonight's race. Of course, our friends at Butt Kicker, for everything they've done for this series and sponsoring the Lionheart Retro Series this year, as well as George and Zaldo and the admin team at the Lionheart Series that uh, provide us with so much great information and give us this opportunity to run in and race in this league and call these races here on the Irish News Sports Network. Big thanks to the software and hardware companies that we use for our broadcast here at Global Sim Racing Channel. You can see them listed on your screen. Additional thanks to June Lalonde, who also provides the wonderful music. If you uh, are interested in more of her great work, you can check out the contact info right there on the screen. Thanks to our team today, the banker, Amjed, Dougie. If you'd like to find out more about GSRC, at GlobalSimRacingChannel.com, along with the archived races and upcoming broadcasts. And we're also on Twitter at GSRC Channel, at Facebook as well, slash Global Sim Racing Channel. I know Sean Ambrose hosting watch parties all day. Been following along with those. Next race, we talked about it already. Everybody's excited. Mossport, O Canada, December 12th, the penultimate race of the season. And the week after, we'll head to Auto Club. Put a bow on this one. Have some more upcoming races here on the iRace and Esports Network and GSRC flashing across your screen. Make sure you check them out. Mark them down on the calendar. Remember, Newman's first lot, folks. Your brakes are useless when you're upside down. Happy Thanksgiving. Good night.